anytime anyone is treating and designing appliances for patients in order to manage or treat a parafunctional habit, it is important to understand which type of appliance to fabricate. It's critical to determine whether the patient has a muscle problem or a joint problem. Appliance choices is determined by joint and muscle condition and establishing which one is the problem in each particular case, which will impact the way we design the appliance. A simple way to determine whether it's a muscle issue or a joint issue is through the use of a leaf gauge. Loading the joint by having the patient bite down on a leaf gauge is effective because the anterior contact only loads the joint at 60% of the bite force. That means that when the front teeth contact, they apply all the bite force and seat the joint up into the socket. If the joint is not healthy, it won't like it. In contrast, the second molar contact creates only 5% of the joint load because it's so close to the middle. That's essentially what anterior only appliances do. They increase joint loading if muscle activity doesn't decrease. And this type of appliance can be effective for a clencher. But not every clencher is purely a clencher. So we need to be really careful with these type of appliances. If the patient has a displaced disc, we want to avoid joint loading and an anterior load appliance would be contraindicated. When treating a patient who is a clencher, one thing that is key to determine is whether the patient is a true clencher or if there is some evidence of bruxism as well. If clenching, all back teeth are touching and when posterior teeth touch, the elevator muscles that is the temporalis, meseta and the medial pterygoid all get activated. So in a clencher, appliances with posterior contact have a higher muscle activity. With a clencher then, we want to separate the posterior teeth by positioning contacts on the appliance in the anterior region, like an anterior bite plane or a deprogrammer. This decreases the elevator muscle activity. As a result, the lateral pterygoid muscles no longer have to hold the mandible forward and they release seating the condyle in the fossa. Stay tuned for part two. Don't forget to save it. Don't forget to share it. Take care.